Look, I get it. Making your first game could feel insanely overwhelming. There's a million things to focus on, like music, story, a strong game loop, solid code, 3D modeling, 2D art, but if there's one thing I'd say is basically a magic bullet ensuring your game is, at a bare minimum, just fun to play, despite maybe not being perfect in other areas, it's what I call funsies. Funsies are just interactables you add to your game. For example, in my previous game, Neversong, I had these little spinners that you could hit with a baseball bat. I had these pots that you could knock over, grass that you could cut. Sure, most of these didn't actually do anything for the actual player progression, but it's stuff like this that gets you a very positive score on Steam, like I did for Neversong and Pinstripe. The games weren't perfect, but man, I made sure that the player had stuff to do that was silly and fun while they experienced the game loop. What about this toilet here? Can you imagine playing a first person shooter and finding a toilet and when you press the interact button, the toilet doesn't flush? Oddly enough, that can be a disappointment for players and it can result in them slowly building up resentment to the game. Now, what about this turd? It better be throwable, right? What about this toilet paper? Same thing, it should spin, right? What about these tile walls? They look bustable, so they should be bustable. So let's add some funsies to my game Twisted Tower. And by the way, if you're like me and you always dreamt of making an indie game as a full-time job, I have a free webinar below that goes into exactly how to make six figures with just a demo. I was just like you for years. I thought I had to make a game in its entirety before getting a paycheck, but there's actually three ways to make six figures before even finishing your game. I've done this multiple times. So check it out below if you do want to go full-time indie. Otherwise, let's continue. We have just like a, a really weird random task list today. If you've got a toilet, it better flush. In a game like this, it better flush. If there's a trash can, I better be able to loot that trash can. If there is a camera, I better be able to break that camera. Now you don't have to do this with everything. And this this is for 2D or 3D. You don't have to do it with everything, but you should do it with a lot of things. Here's what we've got so far, let me hit play. We have a lootable script. And I thought, okay, if I can loot a trash can and it animates the trash can and it plays a sound, why not just use the lootable script on anything I want interactable? So what we're gonna do, <laughs> is we're going to change this lootable script to be a little bit more global. So I think I might call it interactable. And an interactable script is going to allow me to loot and get items. But if I don't wanna loot something from a toilet, it'll at least animate and play a splash sound. First off, I wanna show you this. Jason today, he said, you've gotta make the cameras breakable, Thomas. So this took like two seconds. Whoa, <laughs> it doesn't work. There we go. I need to fix that. That's a really good example of scope creep. You think you did something, you're like, it's no big deal, it didn't take long. And then, oh, it causes a ton of bugs. Okay, and here's the toilet. Pretty straightforward. Now here's the problem. I don't want it to be lootable. I don't want to get cash out of it. And I want to be able to do it multiple times with a timer. And then you think, well, okay, if I'm going to be doing this with a lot of objects, I want to rename the class. I don't want it to be called lootable. I want it to be called interactable. And I also want it to be really straightforward in applying this to anything I want. The problem with that is it requires some organization of the project. Tom is going to sneeze. <laughs> oh, sound like a fart from my mouth. This right here, this should be optional. And we're just going to do public bull show on screen description. This is basically going to say, look, we don't always have to show it. Crap, this is so frustrating. I know this isn't anyone's fault. It is messy though. Good. Did that work actually? I didn't even look. Nope, it did show it. Crap. If it's set to false, oh, if it's set to true. Pick up Needler, what? <laughs> oh, it's because it gets set, set active. We need to wrap the whole thing. So let's see if that does anything. Yay, it works. Awesome, okay. Well, let's go ahead and apply this to all bathroom uh, toilets. Problem detected with prefab. I don't care. Why are we worrying so much about a toilet? Because if we can get an, a, an interactable class to work globally for anything, we can apply it to anything we want. I can go press E on that potted plant and shake it, you know? Uh, there's just anything you can do with it. It's really cool. Yay. 
That's awesome, it works. Let's try the toilet paper. Please tell me you're separate. Oh my word, are you separate? Yes. Oh, I've been wanting to do this for years. Okay, but the, the pivot point's wrong. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I'm just gonna set it right here. That's better. Okay, let's save that and see what happens. You know, when I, when I do this on toilet paper, when I'm taking a, when I'm rotating that toilet paper, taking a big old dump, it kind of wobbles a little bit, so I don't mind. I don't mind that. Okay, here we go. It's just gonna rotate, okay? So it's almost like a Disney movie, how fast this thing animates. And I will say, I'm not a bad animator, I'll tell you that, because I grew up animating in Flash. So something like this. <laughs> I'm not a bad animator. I'm a great animator. <laughs> See? Do I get some credit here? Good, there we go. Look. I love that. Little stuff like this makes all the difference, guys. Uh, this right here, um, same sort of thing. Look, I go, okay, well, what do I need? When you're making an indie title, you don't wanna go too crazy here. So all I'm gonna do is have it just play a sound and the water will come out for like five seconds. That's all I'm gonna do. Start speed is, okay, so we don't need to have force, velocity. There we go. Water. So that's, I know it looks cheap, but it's really rewarding to the player. If they're exploring and they go up to a toilet and they're like, I wonder what would happen if I, oh crap, awesome. I wonder what would happen if I, oh crap, right? It's those little things that really help. They really help. So here's the thing. I kind of want turds to be available in the toilets. So I do think we have a turd poop. Yeah, we got poop. I would like it to spin around. Okay, good. I can I can pick that one up. Let's place them around here. See what we get. Oh man. People are definitely going to want to flush that. This is called feature creep. Just so you're aware, this is definitely feature creep. And the reason why this is feature creep is because Stuff like this, you have no idea how it's gonna impact the game. And it could it could really cause a problem. So let's just try it out though. So it should cause the poop to spin. <laughs> it's trying to go down. Oh man, we're so close. How do we do this? Well, you know, I think that maybe we want this just to be not so big. <laughs> I think it's a very, very important, I'm being dead serious, I think this is a very important aspect of the game. I really do, because this kind of stuff is what makes a game fun. Oh. It's like the world's biggest splatter. The first thing I wanna do, guys, is I wanna go ahead and get these breakable walls working. Okay, so we have this wall here, it's just a piece. And what's cool about this is we're gonna be able to use this throughout the entire game and just swap out the textures and allow the player to break this wall down. I could take this piece here, look at that. Isn't that sweet? You could just punch holes in the wall, you could punch a hole here, and it just looks good. So all we gotta do, this is crazy actually. The theory is all we've gotta do is add a pushable ob or a, a rigid body to it. The rigid body is not gonna use gravity and it's gonna be kinematic. Actually, let's just go ahead and set it to, to use gravity for now. Um, it's uh, gonna have a pushable object script on it. Uh, I don't really want the player to be able to pick it up, so we're not gonna do that. And I'm just gonna go through all of these elements here. Maybe if I turn on wireframe, it'll be easier to see. So I have this, that's gonna be static. That's not gonna be static. Let's add a rigid body to this as well. This one is not going to be kinematic. This is the problem here. I feel like we just need to have that dis disabled by default. I'm, I'm worried about this one because if I break everything around it, it's gonna float. Uh, okay, y'all wanna try it out? Isn't that cool? I freaking love this stuff. Look, it looks like it's actually like part of the world. There's no seams. Felipe did a great job. So if I whack it, what happens? Nothing, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on this in play mode and we're just gonna start with this piece here. It's a pushable object, let's make it initially constrained and we're gonna go ahead and set it to is kinematic is false. There it goes. Okay, let's try it again. We're gonna set all of these to initially constrained. All right, that should do it. 
Okay, it didn't work. We're gonna move him out here and we're gonna see. So weird. There we go. So he fell where somewhere, I don't know where he went. And he flew towards me, which is fine as long as I set multiples. So I'll do this and then this and then shrink their size. And we're just gonna sort of have them basically the same size like that. And they will break out when I break it like that. So what was the problem? Oh, it needed to be a box collider, okay? Oh, that's just my opinion. There we go, Thomas wins again. I win, I win. Two hours later. That feels good. So as you can see, adding these little elements adds so much to the player's experience in the game. Polishing your game and adding fun little things for the player to interact with turns it into a visceral experience. And by the way, if you're like me and you always dreamt of making an indie game as a full-time job, I have a free webinar below that goes into exactly how to make six figures with just a demo. I was just like you for years. I thought I had to make a game in its entirety before getting a paycheck, but there's actually three ways to make six figures before even finishing your game. I've done this multiple times. So check it out below if you do want to go full-time indie. And thanks for watching.